Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams. I'm a uh, fabricator welder at Superior Fabrication. I've been doing this for 40 years with the same company. I'm just going to go through a little bit of what, what I do in a day. First thing we do in the morning is we clock in, pop this Vantage system, this puts in our clock number, our identification, who we are, what time it is. And this will be a routing. This is the part that I will be working on today. So then I clock into this for the job number, assembly number, telling me which operation I'm doing. I get that all clocked in, and then I'm good to go. Here we come down through here. This is what I'll be working on today. This is a two welded, with caps on it, and then I'm putting a leveler on it. This will bolt to the floor, and the frame will sit on top of it. These will be exposed, so they have to look real nice. Grinding is a big part of it. And so I plant the table for safety. And this is some of my tooling that I use. For the job, sander, helmet, it's a big welder, wire welder, face shield is a must when you're sanding on anything, face shield at all times. I wear this extra pad instead of a big coat. I'll just use a sleeve because it's real hot out today. And uh, then I'm going to go through and do a little bit of this. I have to flip it over. I've done the top part already. I'm going to flip it over and start welding on the, on the other side. Magnet has a rating on the side of it to tell you how much you can lift. This tube is hollow, so it's extremely light. This is bulky. See, I put a cap on the end. They start out like that, nothing on the ends. I put a cap on them. Then I'll run a bead all the way around this. Then I will level it down with the sander, round off the edges. That's what I'll be doing next. So I use this little step here, instead of holding the whip up, it's very uncomfortable. Bring yourself up. Wet down. It's good and steady and I can lean right on it. And the more leaning points, it's like shooting a gun. The more points, anchor points you got, the more steady you're going to be. Same thing. You'll also get to a point where you can't lean on the cart because it's getting real hot. I tuck everything in, keep it tight to my chest. Still have good anchor points, I'm not touching the part itself. Just make sure that you're always thinking about safety first, because it is a big deal. There is a technique to sanding. I see a lot of young people make the same mistake. They want to gouge with this part. They keep it flat. Nice and even. They're gouging, when they paint this part, it's gonna be all gouged. It's gonna look horrible. So nice and even and flat all the time. Voila. Now I'll be taking it down. I have to put a couple pieces of angle iron on it. Something is nice and uniform like this. You always want to find your center point. You don't want to pick it up on level. You can help it at all. If it's 84, half 42. Mark it off so you know. These are the two feet that I'll be putting on it. I'm going to check. 
chamfer one edge, and I will show you the reason why. This time it's a butt weld. Anytime you have a butt weld, you're probably going to want to put a chamfer on it, especially if it gets grown back off. You want to have penetration down deep in there. This is going to sit on the end. Just like that. Notice, no grind marks, no gouging. It's nice and flat, it's nice and, nice and even. Lay it on there and flush it up. Now you'll see this side, this is what's called a butt weld. The two sides are, are evenly matched. We don't want that. There's your chamfer that I put on there. It's gonna lay up against there. Now you have a gap for your weld to get inside. You sand it off, you don't have to worry about cracking. Always be comfortable. That, that's what it's supposed to look like, nice and full. Exactly the same way. 